So, so as I said, Kevin was, we, he said, I said, well, the theme of this month is release. And Kevin said, oh, and he started to sing the song. And he started singing the first lyrics. That, what are the first lyrics, Bill? Um, uh, they, say that they, they say that everything can be replaced, that every, every distance is not near. And I was like, what? Why would I, why would I want to have those lyrics sung? And I immediately put up my wall. You know, do you ever have, you know, we all have those walls. It's like, yep, and now I'm done. I made my decision, and so it is. Um, and he started singing it, and then Will started singing it, and I'm like, I, I don't know this song. And both of them were like, what? How have you never heard this song? So, you know, after the shaming of me in the car, I thought, well, maybe I should listen to this, because they were really adamant about this song. So I, I really listened to it. And then I found out that Peter, Paul, and Mary did a version. Then I was hooked. So I went, really, Will? Will just went, oi. Um, I went and looked at the Peter, Paul, and Mary version, and I was so hooked by it. And then the lyrics started to say a little bit different, right? So here's what Bob Dylan wrote about this song. He said, the release spoken of here, now a lot of his songs in his early days with the band was about prison. He, he was fixated on what people feel like constricted. And so he said this. He said, the release spoken of here is not from mere physical bars within a prison, but rather from the cage of physical and mental existence. So this song really is about what it's like to live in a, a mind that is holding you back or a heart or a, or a mindset that is constricting you in any way possible, in any way. So would you pull up the, thank you. So release. So that's, that's our theme for this month, release. So on the, on, the, on, the, on the footsteps of this particular song, there's a line in the song um, that I sang, which is, um, I see my light, uh, every man needs protection. Every man, uh, it's, it's about seeing your real reflection fr from high above this wall. And the first thing I want to ask you to do this month is check to see how many walls are you living behind? How many barriers, how many boundaries have you put up so that you can feel safe? That's one of the things we have to release, this need to be safe. You know, every man needs protection. From what? What are we protecting ourselves from? We build walls and we build boundaries to, say, to protect ourselves, but you do realize, don't you, if I build this wall right here to protect myself, I'm not going anywhere but that wall. I'm now behind the wall. I am now protected, I guess, from some perceived thing out there, but the wall is nothing more than a blockade to my true self being able to come forth and expand. So, that's the first question I want us to ask ourselves this month. How many walls do we need to release? How many boundaries do we need to knock down? Ernest Holmes says this. He says, it is necessary that we release all thoughts as well as things that clutter up our lives. We release all thoughts as well as things that clutter up our lives. How many of you have things that just clutter up your life? You know what it's like when you actually have a day where you clean things out and you have this beautiful new clean space, how you feel, you're like, wow, it's like I can do anything now. I think there is clutter in all of our lives and part of it is that we are too tied to the things in our life and we forget I am the thing maker. I am the person, I am the mind that has brought forth all of this. So when Ernest Holmes says, it is necessary that we release all thoughts as well as things that clutter up our lives. My question is, how do I do that? How do I release what I don't want? How do I let go of beliefs that don't serve me? That's come up a lot lately. People say, all right, so I, I recognize this belief doesn't work for me. How do I get rid of it? How do I change it? How do I turn it into something better? So, and, and, and how do I break habits? How do I break habits? How do I break tendencies to do things that I know aren't good for me? And I know many of you out there have habits and things that you do that you're maybe trying not to do or trying to get over or trying to turn a new leaf on. And sometimes you do well and then you fall back and you do well and you fall back. Why does that happen? Why does this happen? And yet somebody else can just say, done. 
and that habit's gone. So <laughs> I'm, not bring, I'm not pointing anyone out, just so you know. I'm just talking about these things we have, these habits, these tendencies. And Ernest Holmes says, release them, let them go. If it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't serve you, release them. Ah, but there's the rub. It must fulfill something. It must be doing something. And that's what you have to find. What is it doing? What is it giving me? Why can't I get rid of it? You know, Kirby talked about losing weight, and we've talked about this. And she had, I guess, a lot of time where she was attempting to do it, but she just wasn't working for her. But then I know exactly what she did and why the weight seems to be just falling off of her. And I'm going to get to exactly what that is. So let's look at this affirmation again. I release what no longer serves me now. I release what no longer serves me now. So here's the thing about that affirmation and any of you that have some tendencies or habits that you're trying to get rid of or weight that you're trying to lose or whatever it is you want to release. There's a now up there, isn't there? See that big now there? I release what no longer serves me now. The person who actually is able to change their beliefs, change their thoughts, change their tendencies, their habits, is the person that decides, decides, makes a decision to do it now. Not maybe later. They don't leave any wiggle room. They're done. There's a change in consciousness. There is a, I'm done. So that when something comes up that would challenge that, it's like, no, 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 I already made that decision. I'm done. So that all of these temptations that come around, that suddenly we find ourselves, oh, I'm doing that same old thing again. I'm still procrastinating. I just keep procrastinating. No, because you haven't made a final, absolute decision. Because you haven't said, I release what no longer serves me. What's the word? Now. now. That's the word that's missing. So, how do I release what I don't want? Wayne Dyer says this. You leave old habits behind by starting out with the thought, I release the need for this in my life. So, are you all ready to release what no longer works? You have to get rid of the need you have. And if it is, if it's a weight thing that you're working on, you have to get rid of the need you have to fill yourself with something other than truth. You know, if, it's a, if, it's, if you're trying to quit smoking, you have to give up the need that that smoking actually fulfills. What is that need? Isn't there a better way to do this? So I love, what, I love that Wayne Dyer says that. First, you have to see, recognize, what is it that I want to release? Now, what's the need for it? Why do I need this? Why do I think I need this? And once you get that, then you need to be able to say to yourself, I'm done. I see how I don't need this. I am done. And then you just have to make the decision now. So that brings me um, to the song. So are you ready to release? I'm going to ask you this question and answer it for yourself. Are you ready to release, Daniel, Emma, Will, Tiffany, Kevin, Kirby, Christian, Thor, Sarah, Jim, to everybody, I couldn't do that if you were all here today. And, and just imagine I'm saying all of your names at home. Are you ready to release what no longer serves you? Answers? Great. My next question is, when? And don't just yell now to me. We'll get there. But when? There's the question. When? So many of us keep that little thing in our head. Oh, I will. I will. Do you know what I will is? It's putting it out here and just leaving it there your whole life. I will. I will get to Broadway. I will write a hit song. I will find the love of my life. I will be the perfect body. I will blah, 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 blah. I will. The real question is, when? Now, here's the song. The song is any day now. That's what bugged me about the song when they first started singing. It's like, any day now, any day now. It's like, you might as well just say never. Any day now, we're going to have this. Any day now, I'll stop feeling that way. Any day now, any day now. When? What day? If it's any day, pick a frigging day. Which day? What day? That's what we have to get clear about. And it better be today. Not any day now. Today, right here, now. 
now is when I'm going to be done with this. And if you're not done with it, then, oh well, clearly you haven't made a decision. The title of my talk today is An Immediate Response. See all those little buttons that we all push? Oh, I'm going to wait. Oh, wait, maybe tomorrow. Oh, maybe next week. I'll get around to this. No. And there's a beautiful little button right there to push. I'm done. What if, Kirby, all you had to do was come up on the stage and press that little red button and all your weight was gone? Would you do it? Yeah, I would do it. Well, I mean, I wouldn't do it, but for you. I would do it for you. But it's that simple. It really is that simple. Because the law that we teach is not about the future. Is it, Tiffany? Do you ever say, blah, 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 and you have your perfect body, I see the perfect body, and so it will be any day now. That's not how we end treatment. And so it will be sometime soon, any day now, watch, maybe. No, that's all tentative. It's, and so it is, now, now. So if you've made the decision now to release whatever doesn't serve you, you're done. I don't care if you have 50 pounds to lose. That weight's gone. It's gone. Now just live your life because it's going to be gone. It will be gone as you continue to go. It's gone, but it's got to be gone now. You have to make the decision now in mind. This is the month, folks, for every single one of you to turn your lives around in areas that you want to turn it around. And the answer has to be now, not any day now. So we really do forget how fast this law works. So Ernest Holmes says this, our whole philosophy is based not only on the belief in spirit, but the availability of it and its immediate response. Our entire philosophy that we sp I spend every Sunday talking about in one way or another, we forget that spirit, what I am, the, the truth of who I am, the power to do anything, to create anything, is right here, right now, fully orbed. The entire ocean in a drop, and its response is immediate. Immediate. An immediate response. Immediate. Did you get that enough? It's immediate. However, here's how immediate it is. If I say any day now, it's going to say any day now. Is that what you'd like to hear from people? When you're wanting something, do you want someone to say any day now? Any day now. Any day now we'll have a vaccine. Any day now this will be all over. No, I want to hear done. And it is done in the mind of God, which is my mind, your mind. It is done. We have to get that. So it is time for us to really get, as Ernest Holmes says, its immediate response. Our whole philosophy is based not only on the belief in spirit, but the availability of it and its immediate response. So it's your job to work this out in your mind. So let me ask you, what do you want? What do you really want? And I don't necessarily mean what do you want to be rid of, but the month is about release, and I'm going to get to another side of that. But what do you want? What do you want in your life? Are you clear on what you want? Or are you maybe not even sure what you want because you're not sure you can have it? You haven't decided now about it. I remember, I hate to do this to y'all, but I have a little West Side Story story. Um, West Side Story story. I, I was in West Side Story for any for that one person online who may not know that. I'm sure they're all shocked. So I remember Jerome Robbins did not really want me to play riff. He didn't really have faith in me, I don't think. But I really was the best of the best at that time. And I just kept going to audition after audition after audition. This doesn't happen anymore because there are laws now <laughs> that you can't be auditioned this many times. But I auditioned nine times, nine times. And it was literally the day of my birthday, September 25th, 1979. And I had another frigging audition. And he had me sit on the side of the stage, just waiting. And all these guys came in and they're singing, you know, when you're a jet, and I'm watching them all, judging them all, and they all finish, and then they have them dance. And I get up to dance, and Jerome Robbins is like, no, you just sit there. I didn't even make me dance. And they're all killing themselves dancing, and I'm like, I could do that easily as well as them, but I never did it. It was over. They all got cut, and Jerome Robbins says to me, 
um, I need to read a scene with you. So I come out and I'm reading the opening scene with him like 10 times. And finally, he gave me one of those any day nows. And I was kind of a little pit bull back then. It was like, don't, don't, don't mess with me. I almost had the wrong word here. Don't mess with me. And I said, he finished and I just said, you know what? Today's my birthday. I have another offer from Elizabeth Suedos to do a show at the New York Shakespeare Festival. If you don't give me the job today, you lose me. And I left. I was like, press the frigging button now. And I did. I remember taking the subway home going, I guess I'm doing the Publix show because I just totally said that to Jerome Robbins. And I remember when I walked off the stage, he was just standing there watching me walk off the stage. He didn't even answer me. And I just left. You know, one of those exits like, either hire me now or I'm gone. <laughs> and then you're off. So I get home <laughs> and I'm in my apartment and I'm like, like literally like walking around the apartment like, oh my God, nine auditions and I screwed it up at the last minute. Why did I have to say that? The phone rings. My agent, he goes, isn't today your birthday? I said, yeah. He goes, well, happy birthday. You just got riff in West Side Story. And I remember literally, oh, I'm crying. I remember literally sliding down the wall of, my, of the maid's quarters in my apartment. Sliding down the wall. I didn't have a maid, though. Sliding down the wall just crying because it took that long. And later, Jerry Robbins would explain to me that it was when I said that and when I did that, he saw a riff. He said, that's what was missing from your acting. You, were, you didn't have the fire. You were just reading the lines well, but you didn't have the fire. And then, you know, then we had our history, and I'm not going to go into that. There has to come a moment in your life when you say, now, period, end of sentence. Any day now doesn't work, folks. Putting it off into the future doesn't work. Go back to New York and make that career happen. Go to Texas. Learn how to make the most amazing movies you could ever possibly want to see. Now, not later. Bring out all that music that's inside of you to bring out, Daniel. Now, not later. Not any day now. So, I want to go to the other part of releasing. We've got to release the good, too. Not just, not just what doesn't serve us. Yes, I know it was, I release what no longer serves me, but what about releasing the good? If I am the entire ocean in a drop, don't I have the good to release? Maybe that's how we release what no longer serves me. If I'm trying to give up something like smoking, release the health. Release all that I know I am health-wise. That no longer fits here. If you want to release weight, release the vibrant body that you know you are now, and the rest of it just has no place to go. That's how this has to work. Thich Nhat Hanh said this, we have to continue to learn. We have to be open. And we have to be ready to release our knowledge in order to come to a higher understanding of reality. We have to be willing to learn by reading the next book out there, by going to the next seminar, the next workshop. They're all good things to do. But perhaps the real learning we're being asked to do is within us. It's already there. You know who you are. You know what you want to do. There are desires in you. There are emotions in you. There are thoughts in you that are only yours. And you know them. And if you open up to them, you will, as Thich Nhat Hanh says, release the knowledge, everything you need to know about how to get exactly what you want out of this experience called life. So we have a whole month now, an entire month, to release what no longer serves us, and to, I keep hearing in my head, release the Kraken. What was that from? Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. Release the Kraken. Re release the Kraken. Release that, that, that amazing animal inside of you that is ready to just fiercely come out and just live your life at the highest level, a level you've never lived before. And if you have things you need to release, Release the good and watch them just push out what no longer works for you. That's your job this month. That's my job this month. To really remember who I am in such a, an amazing way. To remember that boy, that 25-year-old boy who stood on stage at the Mark Hellinger Theater on Broadway with no reason to say what I said, but something in me just said, I am done. I am done. 
being told I'm second best. Being, I'm done being told I don't have what it takes. I am done saying it to myself. I'm done listening to anything out there that is not equal to who I know myself in here. And I said, figure it out now or I'm off to something better. And so it is. And that's what you have to do with your own mind. Figure it out now. Now. Be done with it. Be ready to move on. Release all the good that you are. And then let's see what the month of August brings to all of us. Namaste.